All right, so I walked in, this Liebert unit was, it said it was cooling and it said it was in dehumidification, but no compressors were running. So I opened up the panel over here. Compressor, first stage, second stage wasn't running. The temperature got up to about 72 degrees before this compressor came on. So that tells me that this compressor should have come on because it was in dehum. Usually when I see these Lieberts in dehumidification, the second stage compressor is the one that starts. So it wasn't on. So what I did was, as I put the set point down to about 63 degrees, this one still wouldn't come on. Now the solenoid valve is 24 volts. It is back. This bat right here. The solenoid valve energizes. You can hear it energize there, 24 volts. We have, I got my smart probe. Got my smart probe on there and my suction line has, um, my suction side has about 112 PSI in there. So it shouldn't be off on low pressure. So next we're gonna check these pressure switches. The high pressure switch, it's got a reset button on it. You reset it, nothing happens. The low pressure switch doesn't. So we're gonna have to check continuity or power through these because we could have a faulty switch here preventing the contactor from pulling in. If not, it could be something else. Could be the contactor, could be wiring. Could be a few different things. So we're gonna have to troubleshoot. So it didn't take long for me to figure something out here. I, I know that the way this thing works is that there's a call for cooling. The solenoid valve energizes. Okay, it opens up, it provides refrigerant into the low side. The low pressure switch should see the change in pressure and close. 112 PSI should close that low pressure switch. So my next step was to go to the switches, make sure we never had a problem. So upon checking the, uh, the switches, that's the, the top compressor that just started by the way. So checking the switches, I found this wire just sort of dangling there and it wasn't dangling, it was actually inside. So it looks like this piece was broken inside, not fully connected. So we're gonna connect that back up and hopefully it fixes the issue. So what can we learn from this very simple and quick troubleshooting of this machine? Well, sequence of operations is massive and knowing them can get you through a troubleshooting call very, very quickly if you understand the step, the next step, the next step. So the way this machine works is once it gets a call, the solenoid valve energizes, it opens up, allowing flow into the low side. That low side is pressurized. The low pressure switch is supposed to close. At that point, the compressor is supposed to start. Now the low pressure switch and the high pressure switch are in series with each other. So if there's a problem with the pressure switches, it's gonna be indicated down when I go and start looking at them electrically. So that's what took me to that point. Okay, because I know the solenoid valve was open. I checked it. I checked pressure on my low side. It was there and present, and there was enough pressure that we could allow the system to start. Okay, but it wasn't. So I had a hunch that we had a, a pressure switch problem. It wasn't with the low pressure switch. It was a bad connection on the high pressure switch. But my knowledge of how this machine works and the sequence of operations took me through those steps quickly, and that's how we found the problem. And, you, you know, that wire just kind of nudged out as I was playing with it. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get lucky. But knowing the sequence will definitely help. Happy HVACing.